Merry, Merry Christmas. Hi, Rita. Hope you have a Merry Christmas, Rita. Thank you for always being on here with us. Hi, Karen. Merry Christmas. Thank you guys for watching. Hi, Debbie. Good morning, good morning. Love having everybody on with us this morning. Thank you for praying for me. I appreciate it. Hi, Bandy. Good morning. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, Sandra. There's our other Donna. Good morning. We are here on this December the 16th of 2021. My goodness, 15 days left of this year. Got nine days till Christmas. It's happening. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Love to have y'all with us. There's my Tammy. Oh, my goodness, Tammy. <laughs> you do dream big, don't you, girl? She said, when is the TV debut? Can't wait to someday watch you on the big screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Vic. Good morning. Fine. Hello? Okay. Um, Micah, chapter five through chapter seven this morning. Um, I think I had shared with you guys about some big, big, big doors being opened for me this year. And, and when I say big, I do mean big, literally big doors being open. Just what's going on in the ministry alone. Um, <laughs> just that alone is enough. To... Well, I'm telling you, when I started doing these Bible studies 12 years ago, um, that's when we started Inman Financial, and we started we started off from the very beginning with the first employee um, doing Bible study at the table. If anybody would have told me we'd be doing what we're doing today, I, oh my goodness, I, wow. I mean, even in 2008, when I started doing the Dream Big retreats, if anybody would have told me, uh, oh my goodness, I mean, oh my goodness, I mean, <clears throat> But the other piece to it is being able to uh, being able to um, being able to sit back and know that God's the one doing it. And I woke up last night, um, got up for a few minutes, spent some time with my mom. I appreciate you guys praying for my mom. She's here. She's not feeling at all good. Um, we'll get her better and get her at the table with us for Bible study. But um, anyway, I, I spent a little time meditating in the word last night, read my scriptures. And, and then it just came to me about on the business side. So I talked to you about the ministry side and how it's expanding and exploding and, and it's incredible. And, <clears throat> but the business side. I, you know, I think for a moment last night, I stepped into my flesh again, and it was like, oh, my goodness. I mean, oh, my goodness, the doors he's opened and what's ahead of me. And, and I, 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 I'll tell you, I kind of felt almost like I did back in 2010 when I started, uh, started Inman Financial. I was, I was really, truly by myself, and I, I had a, a very, very dear friend of mine that helped me in the early, early days a little bit, but he'd never done really what we do, and so what we do is different, and literally, I say all the time that the good Lord trained me, and I kind of got to thinking about that with what's going on right now, and uh, it was like, oh, I, you know, what makes me think I can do this? <laughs> this is so beyond me and my scope. And that's in my flesh. That's in my flesh. I mean, I'm just telling you, 
whether it's the ministry, whether it's the dreams I've got for our family, whether it is, and when I talk about dreams for my family, it's dreams of unity and cohesiveness and and quote family unquote that my dreams are about quote family unquote you understand what I mean and then the business side um I didn't even I didn't even know to dream this big it's it's just literally beyond me and so anyway noticing that I think I'd stepped into my flesh then I started my conversation with the Lord asking you know, um, how long, how long have I been in my flesh? Have I been, have I been toiling longer than what I realized? Anyway, just me and the good Lord had a little talk is what I'm telling me and the good Lord had a little bit of talk. And then I out loud, hoping I didn't wake my husband up said, father, I lay this down. I lay it all down. This is yours. It's not mine. I don't own this. I'm not even responsible for this. God, you did this. You opened this door as you one year ago told me you would. In the book of Revelation, you gave me my guiding scriptures. Revelation 3, chapter 7. God will open the doors no one can shut and he'll close the doors no one can open. And I knew, I knew that I was going to be given some opportunities and, um, and I knew it was going to be big, but I can promise you this. I didn't know it was going to be that big. <laughs> and so I just laid it down. I just said, God, I, if, if, if this door closes today, when I know that you're the one that closed it, I, I'm, I am so okay with that. But your good and perfect will be done. I give up my right to feel like I have to succeed. I give up my right to feel like I have to work hard. I don't. I don't want to have to work hard. I want to work hard because my faith is so strong. I can't not work hard. And, th and that's huge, guys. It's huge. Now, why am I telling you this? As I opened up Micah chapter five through chapter seven this morning, because I barely got started reading when I read the words See, I'd already had that prayer with the Lord. I'd already laid it all down. Said, God, I, I don't have to do none of this. It, it's yours. I only want to do what you want me to do anyway. I only want to do what you want me to do. Um, and if you want me to do, Father, I'll take the next step and the next step as you direct me. But I, in other words, it's like Moses that day at the burning bush. And he's arguing with God, telling God, no, I, I'm not the one to go get the people away from Pharaoh, not me. I don't even, I, I don't even talk right. And God said, what is that you've got in your hand? And he said, well, it's my shepherd's staff. And God said, lay it down. And of course, when Moses laid that down, he made himself vulnerable. He made all of his sheep vulnerable. It was the only defense that he had against the elements, against you know, the predators against everything. He laid it down. He laid it down before God. And when God told him to pick it back up, it was a serpent. So it had been transformed. And then God had him lay it down again. And the next time he picked it up, it was no longer just his shepherd's staff, but it was the rod of God. And it was referred to as the rod of God from then forward. And of course it played huge roles that rod of God played huge roles in all the miracles that took place then leading up to the Israelites being set free. So I did that last night. I laid everything down. I laid everything down. Tom and I can go rent us or go rent us or get us a little cabin out on the lake somewhere or out in the hills somewhere. And we can cut our firewood and we'll be just fine, won't we? I mean, we'll be just fine. I don't have to do anything. That's the freedom. I don't have to do anything. And I laid it all down. And then I picked up my sword. I picked up my sword. <laughs> I started reading. And the first thing I read is Micah chapter 5, verse 1. The enemy is laying siege <laughs> to all you're trying to do.
The enemy is laying siege. Oh, okay. He tells us things in advance. I feel like I probably experienced a little bit of that siege last night when I stepped over into my flesh thinking this thing is way too big. This, I, I, <laughs> they made a mistake picking me. I mean, I had that thought for just a brief period of time. And then I read verse four. So it only took four lines into today's reading last night for me to have confirmation that I'll read it verse four and he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength and I know I knew I mean in that moment I knew that I knew that I knew it was just as though God's voice spoke to me that I am doing exactly what God wants me to do and I'm not doing it by my own strength I'm only doing it by the Lord's strength and, and, and total peace just flooded me on a very, very, very big deal. I mean, what's going on is a very, very big deal. I mean, I've been brought in as a full partner to a national company, a national firm, um, as president. Oh my gosh. This little country girl from Edna, Kansas. And it's way bigger than I am. I can just tell you. It's way bigger than I am. And why did I get on here? Did I, did I get on in here just to talk about me and just to tell you what's going on with me? No, you guys really honestly in the scope of things, I realize you guys could care less what's going on with me. Now, don't, don't jump. Don't jump on me. I, I know you love me. And I know that probably what's happening with me is, is a result of a lot of your prayers. But I just mean in the scope of things, it has nothing to do with anything. But what it does have to do with is reading on December the 16th, 2021 scriptures that for the most part, I have trouble finding the relevance to today in. Now it's there and I found more today. But I just know that there are those of you out there that read today and went, ugh, ugh. And, and so I'm just using myself as an example about the faithfulness of God. This is about the faithfulness of God. This is about your faithfulness to read every single day. Do you know how many times I've read Micah 5, verse 1, through chapter 7, verse 20, that I literally didn't get anything out of it? That I just, I just, Walked away, shaking my head, thinking, what's wrong with me, Lord? I, I don't understand prophecy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I have trouble relating this. At times when I'd say, I don't even want to read today. That's just real life, guys. I mean, I, I'm just here to encourage you. I, I have something big going on in my life right now. I've got some big, big, big good things, and I've got some big, big, big struggles in my life right now. And over and over and over and over again, he speaks to me through his word. When I'm struggling in my quiet time to hear that still small voice, or I hear the still small voice and then I allow doubt to creep in unbelief creeps in, creeps in and it's like who do you think you are thinking you hear from God on and on and on and on I know that I'm not the only one that has those struggles and so I just simply use real life as it's happening experiences when I get on here to encourage you to tell you not to give up keep reading read on the days when it's hard to read there will come a time when you'll pick this up and every single day, there'll be encouragement for you. And, and, and on the days when it doesn't feel like it, you've got the scriptures to stand on that says that my word never returns void. God's word never returns void. There is a work going on inside of you every single time you pick up these, these, this, these words and you read them. It is changing you, transforming you from the inside out every single time you read. I ran across some statistics. <clears throat> I was thinking about 
this Bible study and encouraging each of you to share this, to interact on the page, to, to uh, copy the link and send it out to people. And I know that's been in me and it's been in me because the last two years has just highlighted to me how many people are hurting, just how many people are, are really just down and out struggling. And, and, you know, when something is good happening in my life, I mean, if you're here in the office and, you know, something good happens with one of my grandkids or one of my kids or one of the neighbors, or I have a real cool experience at Walmart, I come running in and the words just start flowing and you guys hear about it. I mean, it's just the way I live my life. I, I live my life out loud <laughs> and I live my life big. I always have. Um, and, and I'm no different about what goes on in my heart with the, with God's word. I mean, with this one year Bible, I, I mean, I think back, it was probably 20 years ago. I heard about it, or maybe it was, I don't see, I don't even know how I come to know this. I, you know, I wish I'd give somebody credit if it was a person who pointed it out to me, but I, I don't know, maybe I was in Mardell's or I was in Lifeway or back then Books A Million or Barnes and Noble, or back then we actually had bookstores. <laughs> and maybe I ran across one and picked it up. I don't know. But you know, that very first time I did pick one up, because I bought it in a physical bookstore the first time I bought one. And the first time I picked it up and looked at it, I can promise you I had absolutely no idea what was getting ready to happen to me how I've been transformed, how I've been changed, how the peace just explodes inside of me. It's, it's like it gets bigger and bigger year after year after year that even when the struggles that are so big are happening, I can have perfect peace in him. And, I, and so as I think about wanting to encourage you guys to share this with people, it's like, I just want to take what's in here and I want to give it to everybody out there. I mean, I want everybody at this table to get it. I want, you know, and, and the cool part is I watch, I look around this table and if I just go back to two years, just two years and compare where we all were then to where we all are now, it's like, oh my goodness all of us, the growth that we've seen inside of us, it's like, isn't it something, Montana? I mean, it's just like, wow. I mean, you've been through some things just in these two years that would have wiped you out five years ago. We all have, we all have. I mean, we've all been through a pandemic for crying out loud. We're still getting bombarded with the news of the Omicron. Uh, variant and the surge that's coming in January. I mean, now they're getting so specific that we have to fear a month. I'm not going to fear a month. January 2022 is going to be the most blessed January 2022 I've ever experienced. I believe that. And so I ran across some statistics that was done by the Barnum Group a survey that was done. And they say that 60% of Americans identify as Christian, that if you ask them what their religious uh, belief is, they'll tell you Christian, that they, they believe they're Christians. And if I've got my numbers right, because I'm going from memory, I didn't write these down. 38% of those will tell you that they've had a born again experience, that they believe they've got a personal relationship, 38%. But then when they continue asking the questions on the survey, the results came back that only 6% had a biblical worldview about things, that they understood the things of the Bible, only 6%. And we wonder why all we hear about is doom and gloom. I mean, without that, we don't have the level of peace that you and I can have. You and seeing I'm preaching to the choir here. I mean, you guys are on here every single day. I, I mean, and the numbers are growing. The numbers are growing. Um, the numbers of partners with our ministry is growing because we know that together we're better. 
that we can reach more when we're united, when, when, when we're joined together as one, that there's a corporate anointing that goes forward. And so I, you know, I, I experienced this myself last night and am so grateful for it that I, a need of mine was met, a, a, a confirmation of what I felt like I'd gotten from the Lord from my prayer was actually written down. And Elizabeth will stand to lead with the Lord's strength is what that verse said to me. And Elizabeth will stand to lead with the Lord's strength. It's December the 16th and I still don't have my guiding scriptures. I'm not sure. Well, I think maybe there was one year I got guiding scriptures in the month of January, but it's not very often that I don't have my guiding scriptures usually by November, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still looking for my guiding scriptures for 2022. I'm still looking for my word. I've got three words written down, but I'm not sensing that those are the word for 2022. But I can tell you this, the anticipation I've got about the year 2022 is off the charts. I, I, I am, and it has nothing to do with a business. Um, it does have a lot to do with ministry. Um, it, it has to do with I, what I believe God's going to do in Tanya's heart in 2022, in Montana, in Donna, in David's, in Vic's life, in in our other Donna's out there, our Debbie's that watch this, uh, Lynn's heart, Lynn's life, Bandy's heart, Bandy's life. I, I believe with everything in me that what God is getting ready to do is everything else pales in comparison. I believe that this word is going to come alive inside of your hearts that you'll start reading with a comprehension that is nothing except spiritual with a spiritual comprehension of God's word that'll give you peace, peace regardless of the chaos that goes on around us in this world. I just believe it with everything in me. To do what is right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's Micah chapter six, I believe, verse Verse eight, it's just little things that I pointed out. As for me, verse seven, and it's going to be a new chapter already. Chapter seven, verse seven. As for me, I look to the Lord for help. I wait confidently for the Lord to save me. And my God, and my God will certainly, will certainly hear me. And my God will certainly hear me. I believe with all my heart, and I keep pointing out the scriptures to you that makes me believe this, that, that God hears every prayer I pray, and I believe that God answers every prayer, I, I, uh, every request that I give him. Not that I like the answer, not that sometimes the answer isn't no, not that sometimes, in fact, most of the time, almost all the time, the answer doesn't look like what I thought it was going to look like. He's never, ever going to leave us just right where we're at, at, in the mode where we comprehend things the way we comprehend them now. Because if he did that, we don't need him. He's always going to stretch us. He's always going to grow us. He's always going to require of us more than what we in and of ourselves are capable of. He keeps us totally dependent on him all the time. And it's in our total dependence on God that we rest we're able to rest sabbath rest though i sit in darkness the lord will be my light i will be patient as the lord and then verse nine the end of verse nine the lord will bring me into the light you see how that applies to what i prayed about last night i mean i'm speaking it over each one of you it's why i picked these scriptures to read aloud as i so oftentimes do when i have a passage of the scripture, a day when the reading is tough for me, then I start watching. I usually read it to read in historical context. So that means I read it physically. And then I go back and I'll reread it and I'll ask God to help me read it spiritually. And then I'll look for those little tidbits and I'll highlight the little tidbits. And when I've done that, the second time I've read it, then I go back a third time and I just do what I'm doing this morning. 
I pick out those things and he will stand to lead his flock. Elizabeth will stand to lead with the Lord's strength. <clears throat> to do what is right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I will be patient. The Lord will bring me into the light. God will not stay angry with his people forever. This is verse 18. Because he delights in showing unfailing love. Out in the corner, out in the column, back in 2019, I guess it was, I wrote unfailing love, unfailing love, unfailing love. He has unfailing love for you. He has unfailing love for me. Hmm. Verse 11 of Revelation 7, and all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings, and they fell with their faces to the ground before the throne and worshiped God. And they sang, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and, an, and ever. In verse 14, and I said to God, sir, you are the one who knows. God is the one who knows. And today, December the 16th, 2021, that's more than enough for me. Merry Christmas. Comments, Daddy? Can you repeat that? We need to anticipate. That's right. I mean, never.